Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Um, my name is uh, my, uh, Irene Gotzi, and I would like to welcome you to this uh, second Blue Schools webinar. Uh, for today, I will be the host of this online session. Uh, I think that uh, some of you might have already know us or joined us in our previous webinar about a month ago. So now it's time for the second session. Uh, let's start with uh, the agenda of uh, this uh, webinar and then uh, we will move on to present uh, my organization, IDEC. So, as you can see, I'm doing the opening right now and uh, we will continue with uh, Ms. Vanessa Batista from uh, Ciencia Viva uh, in Portugal. Uh, she will say a few words about the network of European Blue Schools. Then we will... Hey, uh, sorry. Yeah. Hello. Sorry to interrupt. Hi, everyone. Irene, Hello. I'm very sorry. Can you make it full screen? Sorry. Yes, yes, you're right. I'm so Thank sorry. You. Correct. Very well. Thank you, Marina. Uh, okay. So, as I said, uh, after uh, Miss Vanessa Batista, uh, we will have the opportunity to meet uh, the school partners of this project, starting with uh, Portugal and Miss Carla Sofia Carigio from Agrupamento de Escolas de Atuguia da Baleia, which is a cluster of school in uh, Portugal. Uh, she will start by presenting uh, learning resources for students and uh, representing her country. And uh, Mr. Gaetano from uh, Gaetano Ciarenza, if I pronounce it correctly, from Instituto Canizzaro in Sicily, is going to say a few words representing his country about uh, learning resources for students. We will then continue with uh, Estonia and Miss Veronica Zurinha from Narva Soldino Gymnasium. And uh, this uh, part of learning resources for students uh, will be over with uh, Ms. Figener Turul uh, from Antalya Provincial Directorate for National Education uh, in Turkey. Uh, before finishing this uh, webinar, Ms. Marina Bero uh, from Petra Patrimonia uh, will say her part related to another Erasmus Plus uh, project uh, called MEDEDUC. And we will close this session with some questions or maybe some screenshots. So, welcome to IDEC, even virtually. Uh, we are located in Piraeus, which is the biggest port in Greece. And uh, at a glance, our company is a training, consulting and high technology. Uh, about a few months ago, we were around 16 employees, but now we are almost 25 because we have uh, welcomed some new uh, uh, colleagues and we have some interns as well. We were founded in 1989. These are some services that we provide, uh, namely management consulting, internet and software applications, training. Uh, we receive more than 300 trainees per year, with an exception of this pandemic period, of course. And uh, we run a lot of uh, European projects. As you can see, these are some logos from uh, European projects that we were involved in. And uh, these are some uh, projects that we uh, run and we manage uh, referring to school education. Uh, of course, we run projects related to vet education, to entrepreneurship and to digital skills. Uh, but mostly today we focus on school education. Uh, the, um, the thematics are uh, uh, various, like uh, the climate heritage, like uh, School Starters Hub, which is about hubs and uh, the entrepreneurial aspects in schools. And uh, these are some trainings that we deliver uh, related to creativity and innovation and intercultural competencies. Uh, we have some others related to quality and evaluation and uh, the framework under which um, a training organization can uh, work on. Of course, uh, some game-based learning, some uh, cultural uh, courses related to museums. And these are our latest trainings uh, specialized in creativity in a digital world, which is actually really, really updated due to COVID, uh, inclusive education for migrants and refugees, values education, etc. 
This is the website of our training center. As you can see in numbers, we have 31 uh, years of experience. We deliver more than 50 different courses. So far, we have accepted more than 5,000 trainees and we are involved uh, in around 300 transnational projects. This is our digital identity. You can find us uh, via our web pages uh, on Facebook. And of course, you can contact us either uh, by phone or by email. So this is my first uh, presentation. And now I will start with uh, saying some things about um, this particular webinar, I think that uh, now you can see my screen again. Isn't that right? Correct. Yes, okay. it's fine. And in, in full screen mode. Um, okay, so what is this uh, Erasmus uh, Plus project called Blue Schools? It is a two years project and uh, Petra Patrimonia Corsica is in charge, as I said before. Marina Bero is uh, responsible for it. And uh, we work with the partners from Portugal, the cluster of schools I mentioned before, with the Hios Marine Club, that represents a club of members from the Greek island of Hios, uh, Ponatha, a Pan-Cyprian uh, offshore nautical club and a non-profit association as well, Antalya Provincial uh, Directorate for National Education in Turkey, uh, then Instituto Canizaro in Catania, Sicily, Narva Soldino Gymnasium in Estonia, and of course, IDEC. Uh, the project aims to introduce uh, blue economy to school education, and of course, uh, give some hints and guidelines to students on how they can uh, actually work and uh, think of themselves as uh, people uh, working with uh, Blue Economy as entrepreneurs in the near future. And of course, uh, work on how to build a sustainable future either in coastal areas or in islands. Uh, the project's direct target groups are students and teachers in secondary schools. Of course, all stakeholders uh, related to Blue Economy are part of this uh, indirect target group. Uh, the specific goals of this project is to develop a Blue School concept, to train teachers about the Blue Economy, to create learning materials for students, which is what we are exactly here today, and of course, to organize a transnational competition in which projects on blue economy will be developed. Uh, if we have enough time, maybe we can say a few words about this uh, transnational uh, competition uh, that has already launched in a, before a month. And this is uh, a material that we have developed uh, a few months ago. Uh, which is the guide for teachers. What you can see right now is, uh, let's say, the contents of this. Uh, of course, you have access to this um, material uh, via our website. I will share it uh, with you in our chat and you can uh, visit the website and see what the guide is about. Uh, the main purpose is to present, of course, uh, Blue Economy and then uh, have a, a more um, pedagogical aspect in terms of uh, presenting uh, some methodologies and developing and giving uh, advice on how to develop a lesson plan and uh, some application of blue economy in schools, some lesson plans and some project ideas that will help you transform your school into a blue one. This is uh, an indicative, let's say, page from the guide. Uh, all partners have decided that uh, this guide is going to, to have, uh, let's say, four elements, like four dimensions. Uh, number one, the sea belongs to us. Number two, dynamic sea. Number three, discover and explore the sea. And number four, sea and humanity. Uh, in this guide, you may also find some suggested school activities that could support you in uh, integrating uh, Blue Economy in lesson plans and in your school curriculum. We have some applications of Blue Economy in schools. I'm just presenting some parts. Uh, the first one was based on culture and gastronomy in course, and the second one is sailing in the Mediterranean Sea. 
this is an indicative lesson plan. You will hear more about these lesson plans in a few while. And uh, normally what you will hear today is uh, the learning resources for students, which is basically a portfolio. And thank you for your attention. I stop sharing my screen and uh, just a sec. And now we will continue with uh, Miss uh, Vanessa Batista from uh, Ciencia Viva. I will make her a presenter. And uh, now, uh, Vanessa, it is all yours. We cannot hear you, Vanessa. Sorry, do you see my screen now? Yes, we are seeing it. Okay, because I'm not seeing my screen, so I don't see my presentation, but you are seeing. Oh. Yes, we, we are. are Yes. I and just see gone. your faces. Oh. Do you see it now? Yes. Yes. Okay, because I don't see it. I will try to. Do you see it in full screen now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I will start. Uh, my name is uh, Vanessa Batista. I'm from CNCV in Portugal. Uh, and uh, um, we are the task leaders of uh, an initiative of the EU for Ocean Coalition, supported by the DGMAR, uh, which have the aim to, to start a network of European blue schools. Uh, and we are running this this collaborate this uh, this project in collaboration or this task of the blue schools in collaboration with. Um, MC. Um, as uh, as we know, you know, uh, we live in a blue planet, and uh, but the European citizens are not uh, aware of the importance of the ocean and the seas in our daily lives. And uh, what uh, we we have done in the beginning of uh, of this uh, this task and the launch of this uh, uh, network, uh, we start looking for uh, some. Uh, national curriculum from the countries that uh, you see here and uh, we we understand that uh, in the formal education in the formal curricula uh, we have uh, ocean blindness uh, because the the, the the ocean is not there uh, formally but when we uh, see this curricula in detail, we see that uh, uh, we have ocean topics uh, among all the curricula that are spread in different subjects and are fragmented. So uh, we, we understand that the ocean is there. Uh, we don't need to change the curricula to have a blue curricula. We just need to use the curricula that we have uh, and see where is the ocean now and how we can uh, work with that. With, with that. Um, the, the objective of uh, this uh, network is to bring the ocean into the classroom uh, through project education um, and, and uh, project based uh, in schools. And the main objective is to find the blue challenge, to find the blue near your school and to understand how you can um, work uh, the ocean in your schools. Um, for for that, we we have made a, a set of uh, uh, interviews and uh, see uh, lots of projects in in the European country, and uh, we we find we, we thought that uh, we have the that there are a lot of schools that are now working the ocean uh, in their countries with different uh, uh, um, approach. Uh, here, this Erasmus Plus uh, project that uh, you had uh, is about, uh, is about um, the, the blue economy and uh, uh, how to bring this blue economy to the, to the schools. And uh, what we, you can see here is that, for example, in Romania, they are running a project of making biofuel from algae, algae that they, they catch in the beach. 
And in France, for example, they are developed projects from fish uh, waste. So, but at the same time, we have we have discovered. Do you see my presentation now? Okay, because I lost it. Okay, I have it now. Uh, we we have that in Croatia, for example, they are learning native languages from elderly people and working the, the ocean on that. And in Portugal, uh, there are some schools sending mini boats to the Atlantic with the GPS and they are just to uh, see where the boats go and uh, if they cross the Atlantic or if they go to Africa and when they land in the, in the, in, when they came to land, they contact local schools and they made interaction between the, the schools. So there are lots of examples of work uh, in working the ocean in, in, the, in the curriculum and in the schools. Regarding uh, our project, our main uh, goal is that uh, we can make schools agents, agents of change and uh, sustainability that uh, the schools in, that are in the in there are uh, in this network of european blue schools can share experience and collaborate with other schools because uh, in the beginning of the project we have made some surveys with teacher and have some workshops with teachers and one of the things that uh, we that came from that workshops is that uh, teachers and schools uh, are eager to share their experience because there are lots of good projects that are uh, been running uh, across Europe, but they don't know each other. And uh, it, uh, when when we just show them some of them, they say, "Okay, it was very good if we can share our experience, if we can collaborate with other schools, not only in our country, but uh, but uh, around Europe. What uh, what is happening, for example, in this Erasmus Plus." Uh, project and the, our one of our goals is to bridge the gap between schools and ocean professionals because in this network of European blue schools we have as a, a, a name and a, a, like a kind of obligation of one of the criteria that have to be achieved by the schools is that they have to collaborate with the local community and when we talk about local community we can be talking about ports about uh, fishery industry about uh, aquaculture or uh, about for example um, cleaning uh, one beach uh, and do cleaning uh, beach cleanings in the, for for the plastic so uh, but we we want that schools go uh, outside their borders and uh, connect with uh, with the local community this is one of the main goals of this uh, this uh, this this uh, network so as we are running the project we realize that uh, there are lots of good projects in the european countries for example in france uh, we have the Air Marines Educatives, uh, we had a collaboration between Spain, Portugal, Italy, France and UK, that is the Atlantic Youth and in Portugal we have a, a, a huge program that uh, have now 250 schools, that is Schola Azul. And uh, we don't, and around Europe we have a lot of other um, uh, projects and certifications that are more locally and uh, we don't want that what is one one of the criteria and the main goals of DGMAR is that uh, this network of European blue schools is not to be a, a competitive uh, label for the ones for example like eco school eco schools or others that are uh, very well established in the in in the schools we want that this network of European blue schools to be an umbrella of these all of all these, these initiatives of all of the of these Erasmus Plus uh, programs of all of these certifications that uh, that exists in um, in Europe. We want to mapping that. We want to have these schools uh, in our network to to give them a spot in a map in the maritime forum webpage that every every project of each school have a, a webpage in this maritime forum to to give them visibility 
and uh, and to give them the opportunity to connect with with, with each other and to connect with the other uh, stakeholders of this uh, EU for Ocean Coalition. Because I, I forgot to tell that the EU for Ocean Coalition has uh, three main pillars. The, one, the first one is one about uh, partners that are uh, stakeholders of the marine and maritime environment in Europe that uh, have joined uh, and uh, are spotted light in the map in the maritime forum and that can be used as a contact for the schools to work uh, with because the uh, other thing that we realize is that uh, sometimes uh, the teachers don't know uh, who they who they have to contact if they are if or if they want to to work a topic uh, in their schools. So uh, these uh, these uh, this pillar of the, the the members of the platform uh, it's a it's a huge of opportunity for the teachers to 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 connect with with these uh, marine and maritime stakeholders. The other pillar of the EU Ocean Coalition is the pillar of the youth and here the youth are uh, grown youth like uh, we, we normally say because they have between uh, 16 and 30 years some are uh, new entrepreneurs and they can can work as uh, as uh, ambassadors or in the in the project of the schools or they work they can work like uh, um uh, how do you say like uh, a uh, spotlight for for the kids to see okay i can do that i can have a school of paddling for example or i can have uh, uh, or i can do uh, some work uh, in the beach is uh, collecting uh, marine litter so uh, this is one of the main objectives of this uh, coalition is that we have these three pillars, the stakeholders, the youths and the schools, and we want to connect all of them. And after that, we reward, we do a certificate, we do, we give a certification uh, to the schools that uh, that fulfill the, the five mandatory criteria that are very easy to fulfill. Normally, uh, the schools that are working in ocean topics fulfill these uh, criteria, and the objective is that is to it's to be an easy way to 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 gather all this community in uh, one uh, in only one umbrella. Uh, and why become European Blue School? Like I was saying, some some things some things I, I have just spotted. But because we have, uh, we want active European citizenship um, of uh, of the of the students. Uh, we want to achieve education for sustainable development. We believe that the, the students learn better and understand better the importance of the ocean if they have outdoor learning. We want to to stress the importance of the blue economy and the skills trainings in ocean um, topics for the future because, uh, as you know, we are entering the the, dec the ocean decade uh, that will be between 2021 and 2030, and students that we have now in the schools uh, will 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 work in this decade so it will be important that they gather skills uh, or blue skills training uh, these projects uh, should be should be running in the project based learning pedagogy uh, and we want to like I, I, I was saying before finding collaborations uh, between all these stakeholders of this coalition uh, to 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 give to, or, or to, to give to, to the students the um, know-how about what they can run in the future to in a professional way and uh, to the stakeholders to to spotlight that that they have to go to the schools and to be uh, very close to the schools if they want to have uh, people to work with them uh, in the future we want this community to share best practice and to have an intercultural ex exchange uh, in this uh, in this network for that we have developed uh, um, a, 
handbook for 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 teachers uh, this is a step-by-step -step guide and uh, here you have the, the subjects that we have in this uh, in this handbook we we explain um, the network and the, how it works we we spot uh, the the importance of why to apply to this network and how to register because there are a, a, a simple process a simple registration process uh, to to be part of this network we explain how to develop a project that at least for for the the, the teachers of the schools of this Erasmus plus uh, it, it is not, uh, uh, we don't say anything new, I suppose. And we have a chapter of about uh, inspiring projects uh, where you can find uh, some similar projects that we are working and, uh, and establish new connections or uh, simply to be inspired to do uh, similar projects in, the, in, the, in your schools. We have extended the applications due to the COVID situation, the pandemic situation that uh, all the world and Europe in particular are facing. Uh, we are we are having different lockdowns around Europe. For example, in Portugal, we are now uh, going out of a lockdown step by step. But we know that, for example, in Belgium and France, uh, they are closing the schools. So we have facing some problems during this year and the launch of these networks that is, it's difficult to gather uh, all the European community together because we know that teachers are now facing a uh, lot of difficulties to go to, to the online, to do what they have planned to do. And it's difficult to have uh, some free mind space to to have to put new 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 projects or to to start new projects or to be part of these new projects so we have uh, we have extend our our deadline for applications that now it will be till the 5th of may but we'll have uh, other time for applications again in september uh, and uh, and if you don't have the opportunity to apply now with the projects that we are running now, uh, the ocean projects that we are running now, we, you will have another opportunity to do it in September. Um, and I would like to thank you this opportunity to 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 be here and to share uh, this network, this European network of blue schools uh, with you. And uh, I, will, I look forward to, to see you all on board. Uh, if you need uh, some, some clarifications about presentations or the, the network, please contact us to info uh, blueschools.eu or and see our web page where you can find all the information about the handbook and how to apply. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa, so much. It's been so nice and so many useful information related to Blue Economy and all this umbrella that you're working on. And uh, I don't see any questions right now, but of course, uh, attendees will have the opportunity to ask anything at the end of this uh, session. So I just uh, give the word to Carla Sofia from uh, Portugal. I make her a presenter, and uh, now it is all yours. Oops. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for this opportunity. I'm trying to... You are seeing my screen? Yes, okay, sir. this is not what I want you to see. <laughs> okay. 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 Mm. I think you can't see my presentation, can you? We are seeing yes, it. we yes. can. Uh, because I can't see what I am showing you. Are you seeing learning resources for students? Yes. Okay. Yes, Carla. Okay, thank you. Um, so I would like to thank Vanessa. Okay, we are working at the same country and at the same time 
uh, our school already embraced, as we were talking before the, the webinar, embraced the project Blue Generation, where we are working with primary students, uh, the ocean, but with the curricula. Okay, they are learning uh, math and Portuguese and um, science uh, using the topic of the ocean. So I think it's very important to start uh, when they are young. They are going to become the future. So, okay, I'm going to present. I'm, oh, sorry. I'm not used to these uh, platforms. So, uh, so I'm going to talk to you about the learning resources for students and what uh, we intend to do with it. Well, uh, what is it? It's a portfolio of learning resources for students. Uh, at the moment, it's based on the guide for teachers we already did and that you can find in the project website. And um, we are doing what? We are um, creating some students' activities to develop with them on the topic of Blue Schools, but using active methodologies um, in order so that they work with different subjects. And uh, as um, Vanessa said before, we are using especially project-based learning, among other um, active methods that you can find in the teacher's guide. Okay, And of course, the overall aim is to transform the school into a blue school. And then not only the blue school, but a blue community, and then a blue world, obviously. Um, well, so the goal is... is Sorry. Oops. Okay. So uh, the main goal uh, is to take students learning by doing, because when you do, you learn better. And it's not only more engaging, it's more effective. The learning is more effective. Uh, so we want them to realize and understand the importance of C uh, in the economy, not in the local economy, because it's really important here in Knish. Um, we live by the sea, but it's also local, national, and the global importance. We usually say it's global, okay? So it's very important for, for the local economy. And all sea life and environment um, affect life and has to preserve, to be preserved and, and enhanced. Of course, we want to raise awareness of school children and teachers related to the sea, promote oceanary education, environmental education and encourage, of course, the blue economy activities. Uh, we want to contribute to the sea literacy and the sustainable management of the sea in education systems. Uh, we want our students to become agents for change and see sustainability. Okay? I think uh, it's fashion now, but my action matters. Your action matters. Our actions matter. So we can do it a better world obviously so now what are we doing with these how are we doing these learning resources well this is the timeline so till february we were designing the students projects and some lesson plans then in march we we did some learning resources for the lesson plans and for the project we sought uh, now we are implementing them some of them were already implemented um, we are going to analyze impact, what is okay, what can be improved, and uh, do the evaluation of the activities we created, not only by the teachers, but I, also by the students. And then we'll gather the good practices um, and we'll share them, we'll share our experiences. And uh, finally, uh, we'll have the online publication of the learning resources, okay? This is the timeline and now, uh, as uh, Irene said before, uh, we've got, we are working on four dimensions. All the works, all the projects, all the lesson plans are based on these four dimensions. What are they? And I'm just going to explain them at a glance. Um, the first one is the sea belongs to us all. What are we working? What do we intend to work with this one? Sustainability, environment. Uh, we need to, uh, to bring students and the community closer to the sea. To strengthen, to strengthen ties. Um, there are a lot of problems. We are all part of the sea, and the sea is of part of us, obviously. Then the second dimension, dynamic sea. We are talking about maritime transports, not only the transport of goods, but the, the transport of people. And why not um, the national defense? They use transports. 
uh, submarines and other kind of um, transports, but also renewable energy. In, here in Tunis, we've got the first um, wave energy um, process. It's called Serge. It's they are trying it. We hope it works well, and obviously sports. Um, among other things, but for instance, here in Peniche, surf is a source, a local source for a huge uh, income, for instance, um, or for instance, boating or sailing in some countries in Europe, it's really important for the economy. Um, the third one, discover and explore the sea. Uh, we are talking about fishing, sorry, tourism. Uh, oops, sorry. Biotechnology, gastronomy, medicine. Um, I don't know. Uh, discover and explore the sea. And finally, the sea and the humanity, culture, heritage, history, literature. The sea is part of our lives since the beginnings. For instance, Fishing together with agriculture represents one of the oldest human activities. So it is really important. Okay. And the heritage. Okay, so now. Oops. How do how are we dealing with it? So we created lesson plans. Uh, this is a an example of a, a lesson plan. We need a topic, the contents, what goals do I want to achieve? What skills are students going to work? What subjects? Because we want not only to work on math, on science, but we want to work together because um, learning, as I said before, is more effective when they learn um, interdisciplinarily. OK, uh, the typology, uh, is it a project based learning? Is it a gamification? Uh, is it learning by doing? OK, and the schedule we need to 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 establish um, dates so that uh, deadline so that get that they get more responsible for instance what material am i going to use what activities what strategies the assessment okay what was the impact uh, i need a feedback uh, what did i learn what did i need to what do i need to improve what's my next steps okay no more why not some other resources so that students uh, that we are always dealing with different kind of students without with different written written for learning so you can always think about those that are really good students or those that just want to really know more about it uh, the digital tools we can use and that you can find also in the um, guide for teachers we've got a list of digital tools that you can use um, to promote these activities and the digital resources and obviously um what I, what i mentioned is it about the sea belongs to us dynamic sea discover and explore the sea or sea and humanity okay this is a, an example it's a clean one and when we thought about the project we had some ideas what ideas okay stop motion videos some of them are being put into practice okay uh, augmented reality uh, models uh, building models in for instance in art and math beach recycling beams digital games obviously recipes book why not um a flash mob on earth day on the oceans uh, day that is going to be now okay. a scavenger ant around heritage for instance a digital library that we already did uh, with teachers with books about to see from the different countries from the partners countries uh, some exhibitions we we put here art steps because it's a digital exhibition tool uh, webinars just like this one but uh, also bringing technicians to school uh, a glossary of C vocabulary for instance or blue economy uh, this one uh, we are we are working on this one too it's a 2050 newspaper um, if we become a, a blue school and a blue community and a blue world, this newspaper is going to talk about good things. But if we don't become a blue school, this newspaper maybe isn't so, not so good and a little bit scary. We'll see it. We'll see it. Uh, a blue passport, uh, a field trip, uh, Minecraft Sea World. We already did these two. Students love it. 
3D project, um, a scape boat, and uh, these ones are orange because I'm going to talk about them after this. Scape boat, aquaculture, visual poetry using languages of virus and other, um, among other tools, and the beach cleaning. Okay, so now I'm going to present you um, some of these projects that we did at our school until the moment. Okay, first one, it's a scape boat. And as you can see, we always use pictures from Punish uh, and our municipality. This is Berlanga Island. So this is a scape boat, not only a scape room, but a scape boat um, where you invite students to solve some issues um, and some questions related to the sea, and but not only about pollution, also about history um, and science, math, okay, um, geography, music, arts, even physical education. And they need to do this to exchange ideas and do some research work. Okay, so here is the the, um, the lesson plan I already um, showed you. This one is for these special activities. And I'm just going to show you. And this is the scape boat. If you click here, okay, I'm going to open it uh, just to show you. This is a scape boat uh, made with Genially, okay. And well, you can click and you'll see, for instance, the map. This is Berlin, our treasure, one of our treasures. You've got the characters, for instance, I think that you know the tourists, some of you. Uh, the mission, what is the mission, okay, and the introduction. Okay, this is an example. Okay, I'm going to get back to my pre to the presentation. So this is resource number one related to um, lesson plan number one. Okay. Okay, number two, this is an aquaculture project. Uh, integrated multi-trophic aquaculture um, and uh, it is intended to build an aquarium uh, to put in practice aquaculture. It's a, a huge project um, but it's very enrich enriching for students and even for the school. These are some of the activities that we intend to do. Uh, we also have for instance a field trip for specimen collection. Okay. Uh, and they need students need to measure um, parameters and record and conclu conclusions. So you, we've got here, for instance, the lesson plan. This is a big one because we've got a lot of different things to do. You can see these after afterwards. You are going to see these in the learning resources learning resources for students. Sorry, to know more because it's not easy to make a aquaculture at school. Um, this is the dimension, discover and explore the sea, okay? For instance, um, you also can find the protocol. How are we going to, to do this? Uh, first, we need to create the aquarium and then we need to, um, to uh, okay, I, I'm just going to, okay. Students need to, I, I can't remember the word in English. Okay. Just for instance, this, this is the protocol, what they need to do, do to do. And okay, uh, for instance, uh, they need to record their experience, what is happening. Uh, they need to take care of it and to to ve to see the development of the aquaculture. Okay, this is just an example. Okay, I'm going to close this. I'm going to get back to the presentation. This is resource number two. Okay, now the other one. The sea in the poetry of Marianne Calado is a local poet. So students, this is students already did this one. So, so they researched for poems related to the sea and the archipelago of Berlingas that you can see there, uh, um, where the sun is is the sunset behind Berlinga. Uh, then they made uh, um, visual poetry using the language virus, uh, language is a virus tool. And then they did biographical research and made a presentation biteable. And then uh, they made an interactive picture with singling. And then they shared it on the Google Maps of the class and on the Padlet. For instance, this is the lesson plan. So, um, and I'm going to show you the infogram, okay? 
that is already done with the students' projects. I hope that you are seeing them. This is in Portuguese, okay, but the, the students work in Portuguese. Um, these are the, the, the planning, the searching, and now I'm going just to show you the languages of virus. I don't know if you know this, um, this web tool. I'm going to click here. Okay, for instance, you can see here, uh, one student made this with a poem from the Mariana Calado, and it's really, really nice. The other one, okay. I'm going to open again. Okay, then they made some uh, presentations using Biteable. I'm just going to click on one of them. This is a video where they present the life, the biography of uh, Mariano Calado, because it's important to, to go further, to know more about things. I'm going to close this one. And finally, um, they made some, I'm going to click on one of these fish. This is one of the pictures they created for Portuguese, this is uh, for the Portuguese, okay? So this is Berlinga, and you can see here, it's a video, uh, some books, some pictures, okay? And these are the authors of the project. I can click here on the book, and... Okay, if I click here, you you listen the um, the poem, for instance. If I click here, it's the, okay, the biteable. So you can see different here, it's a, okay. You can see here the visual poem using language is a virus. Uh, this one is the biteable, and this one is some of, is the audio of the poem. So it's really nice and students just enjoy it. If you click any of these fish, you'll see uh, one work, okay? This is pro resource three and I think it's to finish because my time is also finished. This is uh, the last one, beach cleaning. Uh, we live just by the sea. We are surrounded by sea. I can see the sea from my um, window. Uh, this is Confusa. And it's the main objective. Uh, the main goal is to conduct awareness in the classroom, action in the classroom. First, they are, we are going to present some problem, the problem of marine litter uh, and with some movies and then we have a giant game of glory working on the the problem on the issues they also will carry out a practical sand cleaning and garbage but monitorizing the tech activity okay and finally escape room okay so this is the the lesson plan and for instance this is this is the sea glory game this is not a board game this is a, a floor game it's a a big one to be done on the floor and where the students where one student when student preach group is the pawn okay so they have questions and they can go forward they can go backward that well and this is the the guide we made our own beach cleaning guide so where students need to analyze and monitorize what they got when they were collecting garbage plastics metal glass cigarette butts uh, other rubber okay and so on you can see the guide here and the escape room, okay? This one, the other one was made with um, Genially. This one is made with Google Forms, okay? So if you enter here, you can have, you can see some of the questions. I'm going just to write something, okay? It doesn't exist, but don't worry. <laughs> okay, and then you'll see it's, you have some questions and you need to solve them to go, to move forward. Okay, there are some chemistry, you can find chemistry, chemics, math, and the other things in this um, escape room. Okay, and okay, you know, more ideas, project, and learning resources will be soon available on the web page of the project, just at a click away, uh, blueschools.eu, uh, and on the next present presentations, obviously. And because we think it's important, just don't forget individually we are a drop but together we are the ocean my action matters our action matters are, are as i said before and of course you are invited to visit Punish and our municipality you can find berlinga's island the fort of saint john baptist this is set marsh the aquarium is in set marsh our research research center in Punish for the sea um, this is Balial. 
uh, one of our beaches with the sunset in Berlinga, and this is Praia da Consolação. Well, this is it. I hope you enjoyed it, and oops, I'm going to finish it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Carla, Sofia. Was I on time? Was... Yeah, okay. <laughs> we we missed time, but it's it's okay because everything that you shared were really, really nice. I mean, I want to become a student again and mm -hmm. come to your school. <laughs> so many great things that you implement over there. Uh, we have some questions, which I think nope. is better that uh, we answer them now because later on we might, you know, lose the focus. Uh, two questions. One, what is flash mob? Is it oh, a digital tool? No, a flash mob is, um, you know, those dances or that you imagine you are going on the street and so, suddenly a group of musicians or dancers just prepare. Yeah. Um, an activity in the street. Uh, ah, like about, an art. Yes, so okay. we would like to do it on Earth Day here at school. Why not to build, I don't know, uh, the world with people? I don't know. Uh -huh. uh, so singing. it's like a role play and things like that. Yeah, could be could be defined like that. Okay. Uh, another question is, um, what is language is a virus? Is it again a digital tool or not? Yeah, it's a digital tool. It's okay. um, you can build visual poetry using it. You just uh, I, I showed you one yeah, of the you did, pictures. But yeah. the the question came before you showed it, so I don't okay. know whether it's valid anymore. And uh, mm -hmm. I have a question on my own. Um, mm. You you presented the bits guide. I was just wondering, uh, like the bits cleaning. Uh, guide. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, uh, what did you do with the the found the findings? I mean, did you contact any authorities and let them know what you have collected? Uh, did you present anything to like uh, the municipality or just uh, the rest of the students? What were the let's say the steps? Okay. Yes, we need uh, first we we need to to inform the municipality that we are going to do that because of security. Okay. And, and then, yes, we measure the litter we collect, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and then they are, bec because the municipality is going to collect it at the end, mm -hmm. okay? So we collect it, but then the municipality collects the whole litter. And, and then we, an we analyze what kind of litter we found and we uh, do some graphs and then we establish what we need to do um what we knew, need to do next so that people okay. don't let garbage at school uh, at the beach and mm -hmm. i think it's that <laughs> yeah okay so it's it's a it's a really successful campaign for my standards i mean for okay. student standards yeah yeah well done congratulations then and yeah. greetings to portugal and now we move to gaetano uh i will make him a presenter and uh, could you please unmute yourself, Gaetano? We cannot hear you. Could you please uh, unmute yourself? Or there's something wrong with the sound? You have Maybe... to click on the, on the red button with the microphone. Can you hear yes. me now? Yes, yes, perfect. Okay. Welcome. I'm so sorry for everything you. for that mess. And no, 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 it's fine. Uh, first of all, uh, good evening to everyone. And uh, so Massimo is going to present the PowerPoint and I will explain everything. You know, I will try to be very short, you know, just to take, uh, uh, you know, just to be as short as possible. So to give the other person the chance, you know, to, to say something. And, uh, Anyway, so my name is Gaetano Carenza for the, uh, you know, just for the people that don't know me. And uh, uh, I'm a special educational, uh, educational teacher, a uh, needs teacher. And uh, whereas my colleague Massimo Spata uh, is, um, teaches uh, computer science. We teach in the same school. And uh, the school is the Istituto Tecnico Industriale Canizzaro in Catania. And uh, in this school, there will be in May next month, uh, from the 24th to the 26th, uh, the uh, 
the final what in the uh, let me uh, the project competition so we are very proud of uh, having this competition in our school anyway uh, as i said uh, if massimo or massimo would you mind uh, uh, just sharing the powerpoint so i explain uh, the what we did can you hear me Yes, I, I think, well, um, Massimo is, is not a panelist, so we cannot share, but I think we got uh, yes. access to I your... I can, uh, Irene, can you do that for me? Because yes, I'm a, I will share. Yes, no student. worries. I'm so sorry for that, but today... No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Okay, thank Just you very much. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me just open it. And... Let me just uh, okay. Okay, so uh, um, what we can the do? PowerPoint, the last one, the power, not the lesson plan, the power, the thematic units. Yes, uh, of course. Okay. okay. Thank you very so much. what do we will be able to do? I will have to be a presenter again, but we will hear your voice, and you will let me know when you want me to change the slides. Okay. Okay, I say yes. Thank you very much. I will. Okay. I will be very. Uh, I will go very fast. So. No, no, it's fine. I don't mind uh, with that. Okay, so. Okay. Now you must be seeing the screen. Yes, and I, I see everything. Thank you. Mode. I see everything. Okay. And you tell me when to change the slides. Great. Yes. Thank you very, very much. So. Um, this is one of the thematic, thematic units that me and Massimo and our colleagues you know, did during over this year, so with our students. And uh, so, uh, well, um, we can see, so the goals, so what are seafood resource is, resources is the main topic of this uh, thematic unit. Why we call this a thematic unit? Because teams shape the, the directions of study, organize the information gathered, and enables students and teachers to make connections among subjects. In this thematic unit, uh, the subjects involved are Italian, English, mathematics, science, computer science, and social studies. So what are the goals that we set? You can read here, describe different types of fishing methods, design recommendations for sustainable uh, let me, uh, fishing. That's the, just a second. Okay, and then uh, practice, and then we describe the main aquaculture techniques and describe the impact of aquaculture on the marine environment and analyze the health benefits and the risks of eating seafood. The skills, the skills, uh, of course, the skills to develop are the ones that uh, I know just the eight European key competences you know, that uh, for lifelong co learning recommended by Erasmus Plus program, but which are just recommended for any kind of syllabus at school, you know. So the duration, uh, three weeks, more or less, uh, yes, probably two weeks, because sometimes we didn't have the time, you know, to, to come because we have, um, so, you know, just we are very busy and sometimes, you know, probably took more than three weeks anyway. The materials we use are school textbooks, presentation, slides, videos. Uh, just a second. Uh, websites. Uh, target your audience is uh, just 11, 11th grade students. Uh, that is the students where we teach because me and Massimo, we teach in the same classroom. And they are almost uh, around 16 years old, our students. Subjects, as I told you, are, uh, are Italian, English, mathematics, science, computer science, social studies. Uh, oh, well, you can go to the other side. Thank you very much. So this is a subtopic. Um, so uh, the general topic is just seafood, you know, resources. Uh, these are more just uh, subtopics. And uh, what we, with these subtopics, you know, just we gave our students some um, resources uh, so they could work on these resources uh, just in small groups and then just uh, they had to report you know just what they learned of course the first thing they were supposed to do was because the resources were that we gave were just uh, just a big number they were supposed first to scan you know just to to scheme 
the most important, and then to scan the information and then gather all the data and report to the classroom what they, uh, what they learned and what they found out. So uh, the second subtopic uh, is aquaculture, which is a tool to fill in the gap of seafood supply. And uh, in Italy, uh, of course, uh, it is just a cutting edge sector, but uh, we import fish. So it's absurd, but this is the situation in Italy. You know, you, we, you can go to the other uh, slide, if you don't mind, thank you. So, the third, you know, this is important because we offer some examples of policy measures that have been used to reduce overfishing and damage the, uh, to the, the marine ecosystem, you know, because uh, we know that overfishing and uh, all the chemical, you know, uh, products and uh, whatever, you know, just pollution, you know, is destroying, uh, is, uh, is affecting negatively, you know, just the marine environment. And national governments should establish surveillance procedures and assessment of the environment, environment's effects and monitor the feeding for fattening used for fish and farming. Well, this is another subtopic. And in order, okay, these subtopic, uh, subtopics um, were very useful for our students to get idea, ideas for the project, you know, because for the competition. So that's why you know, just we wanted to you know, use different subtopics in order for them to get ideas to develop for the final competition and for the project they want to, you know, to, to, to make. You can, go, or you can go on, if you don't mind, thank you. Eating fish, okay. Eating fish, this is more concerning about the good, it's a, it's a good habit, and uh, this has a lot to concern with food and nutrition education. Uh, so uh, eating fish is a good habit because of what fish contains, you know, just the nutrients such uh, as uh, vitamin D, selenium, and, uh, and are low in saturated fat. If you can go on, okay. And then the same thing about just, uh, uh, you know, the health benefits of eating the fish, you know, and uh, uh, Yes, you can go on because this is another, uh, you can go, you can pass to the, the, the other one, yes. And this is the last, uh, you know, the, the problem is that in Italy, fish is very expensive. So uh, it's very healthy, but for average people, buying fish is not that easy. So we recommend to eat fish, but the problem is that, uh, you know, just for a healthy diet, uh, it's very hard, you know, normally. Uh, sometimes it's very, you know, the reason is because of the cost of oh, sometimes where to buy good fish, you know, and uh, sometimes how to cook it. And we discovered, you know, that our uh, students uh, don't really, uh, uh, they are not very fond of fishes. They prefer uh, junky food. So that's why uh, we're talking, uh, you know, just uh, it was important uh, for us to, you know, to present some um, typical Sicilian uh, fish dishes. Uh, first of all, to promote, you know, just what uh, um, our just local culture, uh, fish culture, and secondly, just to for this uh, um, for food education, you know, because it's very important. Our students, uh, how we can say, they eat uh, very bad, you know, just eat, you know, because all uh, junky food. So this is not healthy at all. Uh, if you if, Would you like you me go to, to go to the other? Yes, yeah. resource fishing and sustainable fishing. Okay, these are the resources that we chose, but we asked our students, you know, to um, to search for other resources. You know, this is a list that we made, me and the Massimo, but they were free to make research. You know, just to do research and uh, then just uh, and uh, report what they found out. So. Uh, this is okay. The resources are divided into the, you know, what we say, the general topics. It is fishing and the sustainable fishing. And if you go down, probably just you see just the resources we uh, can. Can you do Would that? Would you like uh, me to go here? Yes. yes. Okay. This is all the resources. Okay, for according to fishing, uh, sustain, uh, sustainable fishing. You know, this is second. We have another group which is uh, which refers to aquaculture. And we have all the resources. This is one. And uh, um, just to finish, we have uh, the last one is uh, 
uh, okay this is for a healthy uh, the healthy benefits of eating a fish and if you see the last one is uh, um a popular seafood uh, or you know just this um, a website um, related to the most famous italian uh, fish dishes uh, is in it is in english because we know that this is you know for uh, the european partner and that's why we chose the english one but we have even in italian and we consulted the italian one but we wanted just to put only this one because of uh, the language in uh, for the Erasmus is english and that's it for if you have any questions on the, uh, we were supposed to take uh, i want to add we're supposed to take to um, to go on uh, school trips to visit a fishing village uh, Acitrezza, uh, just because of, there is their uh, museum of marine biology and the second one we were supposed to go to the uh, historical fish market in catania just to interview the fisher folks and the fisher morgans but because of COVID-19, we couldn't do anything. So uh, that's it. Okay, great. So thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Uh, thank, I thank you for doing that favor for me, you know, just to share the... No, no the it's fine. Uh, besides, I'm, uh, I'm the organizer, so I'm the host, let's say. But great job anyway. Uh, so we move on to... I don't see any questions for now. Maybe the attendees could ask something later on. I move forward and we go to Veronica. So I will make her a presenter. And the floor is all yours, Veronica. Welcome. Hello to everybody. Can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. No. Okay. No. Yes. Perfect. In full screen. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, hello to everyone. My name is Veronica. I'm from Estonia. Uh, and I'm working in Narva Soldina Gymnasium as a teacher. Uh, uh, sorry. So uh, you see our school. Um, first of all, I, want, I wanted to say about my uh, country and town. So Narva is um, um, the country's third largest after uh, capital Tallinn and Tartu. There are about um, 57,000 uh, people here. And in our school, uh, study about uh, 800 uh, students. And you can see our uh, school team on the photo. Uh, it was uh, an anniversary, 35 years of the school and about digital resources uh, also wanted to um, say uh, that we also participate in uh, um, beach cleaning uh, as uh, Carla said and we name uh, in this uh, um, competition or participate in as a world cleanup day. Uh, it is uh, uh, at the end of September, uh, the beginning of October. Uh, we also uh, go with the students uh, on the beach and clean the beach. Uh, uh, municipality at the end uh, collect all the litter garbage uh, and uh, digital resource we use is an electronic map where we put a um, point uh, which area will we clean so everybody can see the uh, place where they want to go and to clean so after all all the beach is uh, without uh, litter and garbage uh, so it, it, it is a mass work of students uh, as a flash mob also. Uh, 
uh, one of the digital resources that I wanted to show you uh, is a project work with the Canva. Maybe you heard about this uh, digital, digital tool. Uh, this is an online design and publishing tool. Uh, we can make uh, different posters, collages, calendars, presentations there. Um, it is very simple to do. And the uh, lesson plan, which I uh, um, suggested to do with my students, uh, was a poster competition. Um, that is rising and solving the problem of the sea pollution. Uh, as you know, uh, Estonia is situated on the coast of Baltic Sea, and uh, this is, I think, due to the Mediterranean Sea. So we have a lot of uh, pro problems, in environmental problems. And um, with this program, uh, students create a poster um, on one of the pollution problem. Uh, aims to study uh, this program, maybe with the IT teacher support that uh, also every school has uh, to research the problems of the sea pollution and discover the solution to these problems, to study teamwork also. Uh, when uh, it was uh, at school, so they worked in uh, peers, three, four pupils uh, in group, um, but now uh, we are like uh, others uh, on the distance learning, so they do it uh, by themselves uh, alone. So one of the uh, examples, uh, the, this was uh, made by one student from the 10th grade. Uh, she shows, uh, sh showed the problems of the sea and uh, um, uh, the local the slogan, we still can change it. So it's, I liked it very much. <clears throat> uh, another one, also for me it's simple, but for students it is like entertainment, entertainment program, but a study program. It's a Kahoot. Uh, and uh, now uh, this, um, um, this lesson plan is in process, like a competition project work. Uh, we compare the Baltic and the Mediterranean Sea. So lesson plan is to research information about the, both of the seas, Baltic and Mediterranean, uh, to discover and explore the sea, finding interesting facts uh, about the species, Vipola, uh, species maybe. <laughs> After collecting information, students create a Kahoot game with the questions about the Baltic and Mediterranean Sea. And goals uh, are the same, to discover, compare, um, to have knowledge about the significance of the Baltic and the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea. And one of the examples they have made, um, there, there are some pictures and questions, I think uh, 15 questions about the seas. And um, it will be a creative work of three boys from the 11th grade and they will present this Kahoot uh, in May uh, when we will back to school. I think uh, next week is a vacation week for us and after that we are going back to school. Uh, third one is a video editor, Vimeo. It's a short video template creator and editor. And I wanted to um, I wanted students to uh, describe uh, the sea environment problems, telling a story like a fairy tale, and create a comics making video of this fairy tale. Our aim was to make this fairy tale for uh, children who are going to the first grade of the school uh, and. Uh, to show them uh, in the simple language the problem of the Baltic uh, and Mediterranean Sea. So um, I had one video, but we I think we couldn't uh, see it now. 
because uh, here is no accept. Um, but one uh, one group uh, of students already uh, did the, the video and they will do more um, like a fairy tale. So I, I will show you um, maybe in May uh, when we'll uh, end the competition and uh, like a digital resource, the resource they use um, Vimeo to correct, to edit, uh, edit the uh, video of this fairy tale. Uh, there are three steps of making this story of this fairy tale. So first of all, they create a poster uh, with a story, uh, with the pictures. The story is very simple, like once upon a time lived um, fish Nemo in the dirty Baltic Sea and so on and so on. <laughs> uh, and uh, of course, uh, English teacher, teacher of English will correct the sentences, correct the English language. And after all, they make a video of this fairy tale with pictures, with um, comics. Uh, second step, yes, I said already creating comics and video. So they worked in groups. Uh, now they do this work through Zoom uh, in my lessons, geography lessons. So we will end these uh, fairy tales this year. And uh, can you hear the video? No? No, and I'm not so sure whether um, the bandwidth is enough for you to, to share the video. Oh, okay. That's why I wanted you to mm -hmm. send beforehand. But okay. nevertheless, we can upload it uh, on the um, uh, project website and mm -hmm. all attendees could have access to it in a few days' time. Okay, okay so one of the examples was here in the uh, presentation. And the last one digital resource is a book creator read book creator where you can combine text images audio and video uh, so um, for for me it was interesting to create uh, an electronic book of endangered species of the seas of the baltic sea for example and compare with mediterranean sea so uh, this is a very uh, interesting creative work for students uh, some of the uh, some of the examples uh, I found uh, on the, this website, for example, water erosion and uh, where you can put uh, different pictures, uh, stories. So it would be very interesting uh, to make book, electronic book of uh, sea species. So the, this was the last uh, digital resource. And thank you. Do you have questions for me? Yes, we have uh, one uh, questions, uh, yes. question. Let me just um, stay like this uh, until I make uh, Figen uh, the presenter. The question is uh, whether you, you and uh, your partner from Portugal had the opportunity to compare the findings that you have collected from the beach cleaning. I mean, more or less, it would be like, you know, cans from refreshments or, mm -hmm. I don't know, water bottles or things like that. But in terms of, uh, let's say, more unique findings, did you ever think of uh, comparing them and say, wow, we found the same or there's nothing in common? It's an interesting idea to compare and maybe to count the liters of True. garbage yes. there. So it's in, in, an interesting idea. Carla, what about you? What yes, do you think? I, I, I love the idea, I must tell you, because we, we already know what are the 10 most uh, uh, liters that you can find in the Portuguese beaches. So it will be really nice to compare them to Estonia. We can do okay, that so at the end. Yes. yes, it would be a bonus fact for this project. Yes. Okay. <laughs> great, great. So I give uh, the word to Figen and uh, I make her a presenter so that she can uh, share her presentation. Welcome, Figen. Hello, everybody. 
I try to share my screen. Can you see? Yes. Is it possible to put it in the full mode or you are okay with that? Can you see? Yes, thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Hello, I'm Tijan. I live in Antalya, Turkey. Uh, I am also an e-tuning ambassador. Today, I'm going to tell about e-tuning and uh, the digital games, the sea and humanity. In our e-tuning project, we planned our working team. There are 12 teams in this video. Let me see the e-tuning page. Don't leave. Yes, can you see? Yes, we can. Yes, this is our e tuning the e -tuning environment. Great. Okay. Yes, this is our e tuning platform, and there are twelve teams in our project. They worked different uh, events and different activities. Uh, today, I'm going to tell about the digital games, the C and Humanity. As you see. Our team is here. There are two coordinators and uh, students work together. Uh, they prepared lesson plan and uh, took photos and uh, they created digital games. And we created a final product about our digital games. Let me see the presentation. Uh, our coordinator, te coordinator teachers led our students. Each team created their classes using the pixel map filters, and communication was coordinated through both green space and WhatsApp groups. You can reach all of your all of our friends and works via our team space page, but you should be teacher uh, to register. This is our team, and. Our team uh, created digital games by using web tool tools about sea and humanity. The content was uh, create digital games by using relevant web tool tools about sea and humanity. The goals were to search about the secrets of the seas, to be aware of importance of seas for people and universe, to learn about the names of the sea creature, to understand the significance of the economy to emphasize on biodiversity and sustainability. The skills were students will search and find the secrets of the sea. They will also learn about the names of the sea creatures. Students will be aware of the importance of seas for people and the universe. They will search about the significance of blue economy. Students will also learn using of Web two tools by building games about the subject and by playing games, they emphasize on biodiversity and sustain sustainability. The subjects in this uh, team is English, science, social science, and geography. The activities, uh, description of the activities are, students will search the concepts of, about sea and humanity they will try to understand, sorry, on the relationships about seas and economy, biodiversity, sustainability. They will search the significance of seas for universe. Students will try to find information about the blue economy that personal use job finding. And uh, they will find information about sea creatures. All these research will be ended in one week after all the research, students will pass the uh, second step. In the second step, students will find games about the subject and they uh, will find the relevance of Web2 tools, Web2, uh, Web2 games tools. Then they will create and build their own digital games. Strategies teachers can use digital games about sea and humanity in their lessons. 
They will use these games in their lessons by teaching the importance of seas for people and the universe. These games will be used in 40 minutes in each lesson. Uh, students will learn the concept about subjects by playing games. Every student should have a tablet or a computer for, play, for playing in the lesson. Computer teachers can help students install the games, and then teacher will tell the students how they can play. Here, our students are creating their own digital games. At the end of the uh, work, we prepared a digital game ebook. Uh, you can reach it. Can I share the link? Or could you could you please yeah. try? Uh, or uh, if you uh, no no, I will share the link. Uh, would you like to present it? Okay, I will present it. Okay, now great. this is our ebook. This is our team and students prepared more than 15 uh, digital games in this activity. If you click on the links, you can see the games. Sorry. It didn't work. Huh. Yes, okay. Can you see the game? It is loading. It is still loading. Yes. Yeah, loading. now we can see. Okay. This is one of them. They will try to find the names of the sea and they can play another one. Opening the box. There are questions here and they can play another playing game. It's different from others. And I want to see. They created their own digital games using learning apps and word walls. But I have loading problems. Sorry about it. Since you are loading uh, via this platform, okay. it might take some minutes uh, again. That is why it takes so long. Okay. Yes. Okay. So it is a labyrinth. This is another game, labyrinth game, yes. Okay. Can you see the questions? Yes. Okay. And an egg room. There are four types of digital games here. The kind of word game. It 
sounds good. Another one. Little questions. And second step, third step is running. This is our ebook. I can share the link. Yes, do you think you could share this uh, here in the chat or would you like to send yes. it to me? I'm fine with both options. I, I can share it. I can share it on the chat. Yes, just make sure that uh, you have uh, selected all entire audience so that all attendees can uh, can have access to this information, okay? Okay. Organizers and panelists only. No, no, no. Please check. Uh, it's uh, above organizers and panelists. If you roll up, it says all, entire audience. Please share it. In not, uh, we cannot. Uh, I think maybe just the, the organizer can, can do so. Okay, so you can uh, share it to organizers and panelists only, and I will make sure to share it with everyone. Okay, forget. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. So uh, this was your presentation. Have you finished? Yes, I have finished. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so now I make uh, Marina Bero uh, the presenter, and uh, she can say just a few words about the project Mededuc, and uh, I will make sure to share the link of this uh, project website. Okay. Oh, okay. I see the, the problem now. So, you, so you can see my my presentation, or can't you? You're seeing it. Yes. 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 Seeing it out. Okay. We'll try. <laughs> it would be difficult for me to. Sorry, just a second. Okay. You still see it, huh? Okay, so uh, so I'm Marina from Petra Patrimonia, and I'm going to present you Mededuc project, which is an Erasmus Plus project as Blue School. Oh, here. Um, so Petra Patrimonia, just to say, is an activity and employment cooperative dedicated to blue economy, agriculture, heritage, and building sector. As you may know, um, the Erasmus Plus uh, partnership is um, is to be done by uh, different kind of partners, so we are the the ones representing uh, entrepreneurship. Um, we are giving support to the creation of new projects uh, in order to to get new jobs and new income generating uh, activities. Uh, indeed, it's the support of new entrepreneurs and uh, our employees are experts in the, in the above uh, field, and they are all involved um, in the in the European project as we got like Blue School, we have other ones uh, mainly about sustainable development, environmental awareness uh, and education, ecotourism, uh, enhancement of port heritage, youth participation, taking initiative and uh, entrepreneurship. Mededuc project is um, a project made of seven partners from Spain, Greece, Italy, Croatia and France. And the idea is to produce uh, educational resources for teachers uh, in order to raise awareness uh, about the Mediterranean uh, Sea and, um, and the protection of our environment. Uh, so it's about, so the, the concern is uh, the discovery and valorization of the coastal and maritime um, environment. And we are focusing on uh, specific issues uh, which are like pollution and waste, mass tourism, overfishing, and so on. And in order to understand those ph phenomena, um, the idea was to create um, a pedagogical reference, so a guide for teacher, like the one, or it's not the same thing, but um, something like this, to, to explain the, the problematics. And we've made some activity resources in order to, to be developed uh, into the class um, with the, the students. 
and we have a, a website of the project also and over there you you will be able to to find uh, the activities so the website is www.mededuc.eu uh, I just wanted to share with you one of the activity we've um, we we developed um, each activity is made of the following session so you have the school disciplines which can be engaged in this um, activity, then the pedagogical content, the prerequisites uh, the students might, uh, might have, the learning objective, the description of the activity, the type of activity, target audience, place, material, duration, authorship, links, and notes of the author. And uh, so I just shared the, the, the image, the picture of it, and um, just for you to, to see, um, how, how it is built and uh, this one is root of my genes and the activity uh, allows you to introduce uh, globalization environmental and societal impacts economic challenges and sustainable development principles through the analysis of from where the classes of students are coming so from which country uh, what the, the class is made of so you we in, into this activity you have to get uh, um, samples of material like cotton, like uh, um, zip and so on and uh, you, you put it into envelopes and then you know from where it is like cotton, okay, it's coming mainly from you know, Nigeria for example and you have um, the human uh, development indicator on, the, on this envelope of the country so you will be able to um, develop some content about okay, what is the human development of this country and what um, they are doing for us and what we are doing to them what is the price also of the clothes um, you can also speak about the social conditions uh, the incomes of the producer uh, and the, the level of the country and this is um, to do so you are you you have a world map and then uh, at each time you have a country so for example these uh, genes uh, were made in um, China and then uh, we needed to put sounds on it in order to to give it a, a proper layout so it was sent in Turkey then um, we needed to to have uh, this blue color like indigo color all right this is made in, in Italy and then you have those pins on this uh, one map and you are taking some thread of wools of wool sorry and you are putting uh, the link between all the pins and you have like this you have the, the roots of the gene and the idea is to take this thread of wool and to calculate the kilometers uh, well yeah to, to have a scale in order to know the, the kilometers and to um, to develop it into energy so we will get the kilometers uh, meaning uh, I don't know how much CO2 and for all the kilometers of the production of these genes how many uh, CO2 tons it is uh, taking in order to have an idea of what is our consumption uh, about indeed it can be made with students but it can be made uh, uh, at home um, uh, I've done it uh, with my husband it was uh, very funny at the same time a bit uh, disappointing <laughs> Um, okay, that's all I've got to say um, for now. You can uh, find our information here. You have got my mail, the one of my um, colleague or number, and also our website. Thank you very much. Okay, Marina, thank you very much. Uh, an interesting uh, project indeed about the footprint of everything that we wear and what we cause to the planet um thank you for that uh i think we have uh, one uh, final question because uh, we are uh, over this was the last presentation uh would you like to read it marina yes indeed we had a question just before uh it was someone was wondering if uh, the teachers indeed um, were um, trained to use all the tools you've presented because 
Carla, Sofia, Veronica, and Fingen, also Gaetano, you use many different tools indeed. And uh, yes, um, to, to recall the question, it was um, how you get to know this uh, software? Have you got trainings? And is it taking time to, I mean, much time than, uh, <laughs> than what it is to, to, to develop a course? Uh, before I give the word to the school partners that are teachers and can uh, actually, they have the authority to answer, I would like to share something that just uh, a few minutes ago Carla Sofia shared with me. I shared with everyone the link from the teacher's guide that we have developed and it is online and available on the Blue Schools uh, project website so that you all have access to this material and there there is a specific uh, let's say part on this guide devoted uh, in particular to digital tools many many different ones so teachers and uh, let's say school partners in this project were actually um, uh, let's say inspired by this uh, tank of digital tools. So just to give a, a hint of uh, what someone can find in this teacher guide, I give the floor to school partners to say a few words before we close the session. Who wants to go first? Maybe Carla Sofia? Maybe. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for instance, uh, if, you note, if you notice, I don't know who made the question, but we in all over the Euro, all over Europe, we use the same tools. For instance, in Turkey, we use Edpuzzle. We love Book Creator or Kahoot, such as Veronica said too. We love Kahoot and those Vimeo and those tools because we've got some European projects where we where we can learn with each other. Uh, for instance, and for instance, I can speak about my school. We've got some trainings, informal trainings for teachers every two weeks where we teach them how to use a different platform a different web tool so that can they can use it during their classes or during distance learning for instance and we usually share it all around not only around school but around portugal because i know someone and we we, we must thank to eTwinning i think figan because we learn a, with our eTwinning ambassadors in portugal We've got a lot of webinars with them and they are always teaching us very, very funny and nice things to use in schools. And we are a huge um, community of teachers. Okay, thank you, Carla Sofia. Is uh, anyone else uh, willing to say a few words before we say goodbye? I wanted to say also that we didn't use so many digital resources before the pandemic. So now our, our students are complaining that there are too much platforms and resources for them. Um, uh, it's difficult to understand uh, all these uh, resources every day. So they ask teachers to make um, uh, base uh, uh, base platforms to use every day. So, for example, if we're using Zoom for um, communication, so do not use, please, uh, uh, Google Meet or different kind of uh, uh, platforms because uh, small children are not able to to do that. So they are complaining, and uh, these uh, three, four are enough. For, for one week. Can imagine. Fingen, you wanted to, to add something? No? Maybe maybe she didn't hear us. Anyway, uh, I will have to move on to the closure and then share a really one minute small video and we say goodbye. Uh, so just a sec that I can... Uh... Irene, can I say yes. just something? Yes, of course. You, sorry, you can see I've got the, the teacher's guide here. So you can see a list of platforms and digital resources and what mm -hmm. kind of project you can do with it on page 44 of the teacher's guide. Okay, okay four, four. great. <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you very much. I have already shared with everyone uh, the link to the guide for teachers uh, via our project website so that they can all have access to it. And uh, can you see my presentation? Can you see it? Yes, we are seeing it. Okay, great. So it's just three slides. Um, before we say goodbye, I would like to let everyone know that uh, they will receive their certificates of attendance in the following days and just make sure that you check your junk mails as well. And uh, if any schools uh, are interested in participating in the European competition uh, in the framework of our project, they can visit the project website and go particularly to the part that refers to the competition framework. You could also contact us via blueschools.competition uh, at gmail.com and presentations will be soon available through the project website. This was uh, the poster that we have created for this online session. It was uh, developed in Canva so that we can all see just the result uh, from using this digital Two. And before we say goodbye, I would like to show everyone a video and we are over. Our generation can achieve a sustainable use of our ocean resources promoting economic growth, innovation, improved livelihoods and blue jobs while at the same time, preserving the health of our seas. An increasing number of countries around the world are moving towards a coordinated approach and cross-border collaboration on marine and maritime structured policies and joint actions on blue economy. It is essential to address the growing environmental and climate-related challenges that the Mediterranean region is currently facing, while tackling the unprecedented socio-economic crisis that the COVID-19 pandemic has generated. The deliverables of the 2015 UFM Ministerial Declaration on the Blue Economy have been achieved. The Blue Economy Facility has successfully executed regional and national workshops and activities in the eight any South countries. The UFM Blue Economy Working Group is effectively enhancing cooperation and information exchange amongst the countries. The WestMed initiative is well into its implementation phase, identifying relevant projects in key areas such as green shipping, aquaculture and tourism. Most of the Mediterranean countries have joined the Blue Med initiative, which addresses research and innovation through a multidisciplinary approach, including the Blue Med pilot focusing on plastic pollution. Interreg Med and CBC have turned into a series of strategic and governance projects on blue economy. The Mediterranean Blue Economy Stakeholder Platform managed by the UFM Secretariat is up and running. EU managing authority as well as key donors such as CEDA and JIRS are supporting the blue economy priorities. This second ministerial declaration on sustainable blue economy aims at renewing the political mandate of the 42 UFM countries towards a more ambitious series of shared goals with an expanded scope in terms of areas of cooperation, principles and common actions to address the joint challenges for the future of the Mediterranean Sea and its region. Reinforce governance and future of sea basin strategies and promote sustainable circular economy principles as well as tools such as maritime spatial planning and integrated coastal zone management. Promote marine research and innovation, skills, careers and employment to reduce the mismatch between the skills of the labor force and the evolving needs of the industry. Fisheries and aquaculture are of vital importance for food security and provide essential socio-economic value for vulnerable coastal communities. 
The sustainable, climate-neutral and zero-pollution maritime transport and ports plays a strategic role ensuring connectivity among the UFM countries but also in reducing global greenhouse gas emissions. Reduce marine litter, in particular plastic and microplastic pollution. Rethink coastal and maritime tourism preserving the marine and coastal ecosystems, local communities and marine cultural heritage. Promote research and innovation on the marine renewable energies to combat climate change. Ensuring a high level of maritime safety and security for the protection of its citizens and countries. Boost sustainable investment in the blue economy to create a more conducive environment for investments in the UFM countries. The blue economy challenges oblige us to realize that the sustainable management of the resources provided by the Mediterranean Sea is common. Shared good will require a closer collaboration across borders and sectors and on a wider scale. الاقتصاد الازرق هو النموذج الاقتصادي الامثل الذي يضمن استقرار اجتماعي واقتصادي لمنطقتنا ونظام بيئي صحي ومستدام كمثال نحن في صندوق العالم للطبيعه نعمل مع البحاره من اجل التصرف المشترك في الموارد والذي يمكن ان يحمي النظام البيئي البحري ويدر مداخيل القاره للمجتمعات الساحليه As a blue made ambassador in Tunisia my message for the future of blue economy in the South and Mediterranean Basin is that blue growth governance mechanisms should be based on an ecosystem approach to maintain their long-term sustainability. It is crucial in order to ensure the continuity of political agenda, hence the importance of Mediterranean synergies, so that we can truly make a difference. We have very, very positive expectations for blue economy in the Mediterranean, particularly around regenerative blue economy as we are seeing amazing projects for restoring and enhancing marine environments based on science and technology and raising ecosystem goods and services which lead to really sustainable growth opportunities for all the Mediterranean basin. In the case of the economy, we are trying to find a support for the young promoters to invest in our country and to create new it is time for us all to renew our political commitment and take action together. Okay, great. So that was it. Thank you all for being with us. Uh, thank you for spending this afternoon with us. We hope that you are all healthy and safe and you will be able to see your beloved ones and travel again soon. Uh, on behalf of all the consortium, uh, have a lovely weekend and goodbye. <laughs>